Hello, Based LDS. How you doing? I know it's been a long, insufferable two weeks for all seven of my subscribers, if you're still there. Um, I apologize for being away for so long. Um, I had made some videos. I thought I had uploaded them and set them with schedules to be released. And I failed. Here's the, the neo-boomer, I guess, that doesn't know how to work tech. Um, but I am, I, I apologize. I should have, I thought I had some videos coming out. But uh, I was in Colorado enjoying Christmas vacation with uh, my family and my in-laws and having a great time and did not realize that nothing launched. And so when I got back after New Year's, New Year's, well, New Year's Eve, we got back New Year's Eve, <clears throat> I thought, why upload a Christmas Eve video or a Christmas video a week later? The time in us, the relevance is gone. And so, yeah, you know, enough of that. So I'll either just nuke those or save them for later so you'll see an older version of me, a younger version of me in a year if I decide to remake them, unless I remake them or do something else, which I'll probably do. Um, and then the day after New Year's, I got sick. <laughs> you can still, <coughs> excuse me, hear it in my voice. Um, and I still have a cough. And so this has been with me for a week now, a little over a week, yeah, a week, a week. And, uh, and on a Friday, I was hit by a coughing spasm and I threw my back out. Can I just tell you, uh, it's not been fun. Oh, the sickness hasn't been fun. But do you know what has been fun? The progressive choke, the neocon cope, the tears of our Biden administration and the legacy media lackeys. And the desperate attempts to smear 20 congressional House representatives as terrorists, as, as the new insurrection, as traitors. Uh, and just laughing at the whole 14 rounds of neocon rejection. And on the 15th round, serious concessions having been made. So a man who probably should not be in power getting power. Um, and I actually, I want to talk about that today because that has been fascinating. I wanted to talk about it days ago, but I couldn't talk. I couldn't sit up. I couldn't walk. What, I'm an invalid here. But I'm getting better. So let's finally approach this, and let's talk about this from two angles. There's going to be two videos. And the first video, let's talk about the cope and the choke. Uh, CNN... MSNBC, Dan Crenshaw, whatever that thing was with Mike Rogers coming at Gates, although I don't think he was actually coming at Gates. I think he was going to say something and somebody was like, nah, shut up, and muffled him as they pulled him away. Um, the squad chirping about how dangerous the violence they've had to sit through, the uh, how scared they feel, these traitors having power in Congress and these far right, these far rightists that are putting our democracy at risk and threatening a future of our nation. And I've sat back with my bowl of popcorn and my bottles, my six pack bottles of Henry Weinhardt's root beer, enjoying the show. And I hope you enjoyed it too, because great things came out of it. But let's talk about the first one being the non-woke progressive wing. And that's a very small faction. They call themselves progressives, but they do not stand for some of the wokest stuff, like limits on free speech, stuff like that. Um, I'm talking your Jimmy Doors, most especially lately. The what's her Brianna Joy Grays? 
They hate and love to see what happened in the house. They hate it and they love it at the same time. They hate it because it was conservatives who had the moral character and courage to stand up to the establishment and act as a true voice for the people. They hate it because it was Republicans, conservatives, America first MAGA types, standing up to look the establishment in the eye and say, no more. You're working for the people now. Now I have my concerns about these 20 guys. I do. A little bit of power corrupts. I hope that they stand together and that they stay principled. I do. I hope they do. But I do like these first steps. They're encouraging. But the progressive response, on one hand, you've got the media lackeys. Legacy media, CNN, MSNBC, whoever you want to listen to, The Hill, uh, all these guys, uh, young Turks coming out, lambasting these conservatives for standing up because they're the dangerous far right. Now notice this. Anytime they don't like what you have to say, you are dangerous, which is good. You should be dangerous. Everyone listening to this video, you need to do, you need to do something to be dangerous in your life. Because you cannot be meek without being dangerous. Then you're just weak. But you get some of the honest progressives. Jimmy Dore's been doing a great job of sounding off on this, and they've teamed up with Rihanna Gray Joy, Joy Gray, anyway. Because the progressives had a chance to do this same thing when they took back power in the House from the Republicans after Boehner and Ryan failed to do anything. The Democrats took back power. And remember the squad and some of those fringe elements around the squad, they were going to stand up and say no to a corporate machine like Nancy Pelosi. And the voice of the people was going to be heard. And they were going to push, force the vote with Medicare for all and, and some of these other ideas. You remember this? Do you remember this? Uh, AOC and... And uh, some of these other girls, and I guess maybe there could, maybe there could have been a couple of guys I don't remember, but there was the photo op of them doing a sit-in at Nancy Pelosi's office, demanding power. Dem She's not going to hold the power; the people are, and and they backed down. And at the time, the Ryan Grins, the Cenk Ugers, the you know the Young Turks, the Hassan Pikers, those fools. They gave him coverage. Oh, well, if they wouldn't have fallen in line, then Kevin McCarthy would have been power, made Speaker of the House. Because they don't understand what majority rule means, I guess. And they're just lying to the people outright. Either, either they don't understand or they're lying to their listeners. Because as you saw with the Republicans, you have to have the majority vote, not simply highest tally number. You need to have 51% of the vote of the House to be Speaker. So Hakeem Jeffries was never going to get there unless some Republicans went and voted for him. Never going to happen. And the same thing would have happened in the Democrat-controlled House. McCarthy never would have held the gavel. Unless Democrats cross the aisle to vote for McCarthy just to stick it to Nancy. All the progressives, the AOCs, the Cory Bushes, the Ilhan Omars, the Rashida Tlaibs, all they had to do was hold out. Say, not Nancy. Or, if it's going to be Nancy, you're going to push these into rules. And after the photo ops... And after the virtue signaling to their constituents, and after the empty rhetoric and hyperbole that just was empty and flat, very first vote, they fell in line and voted Nancy.
And people try and use PAYGO as an excuse. Well, they got PAYGO. No, that was already written into the rules. There were things that were going to be nothing changed. The squad and the progressive wing did nothing to change the Democratic House. But they'll gaslight you and say the squad held out virtuously, but they understood they had to sacrifice to keep a, a, a Kevin McCarthy from being speaker. Because they want to gaslight you and they don't want the people to know the truth about how the system works. Democrats rely on dumb voters. And so they lie. And they conflate. And they confuse. And they mislead. And they gatekeep information. To keep the people into sheeple. Keep them that way. Keep them as followers and not looking for leaders. Keep them afraid. And watching Jimmy Dore and these guys call out the failure of the progressives a few years back when they took control. Now, they don't like what the Republicans have done. They don't like what, those, what the Freedom Caucus stands for. They don't. But the Doors and the Brianna Joy Grays, they at least admire the fact that the Republicans stood up to the establishment and said no. Now, again, they call those guys far-right lunatics the Nazi fascists, but they understand they stood their ground. They didn't blink. And they got real rule change put into the House that will affect legislation going forward. Gotta love that. Where was that in the Senate? Why is McConnell the freaking leader? He submarine Senate votes. And because there's nobody with moral fortitude, nobody with courage in the Senate, they didn't knock McConnell out when they could have, even of the minority whip seat. I call it Romney. Fool. My guy, John Toon, I'm in South Dakota now. I don't know much about Toon. I've only been here a year. He's a McConnell boy. I remember he was he spoke at the high school I work at um, last year. Uh, and and it was good to see him come out and speak to the students and talk a little bit about the process. He didn't campaign. He didn't do any of that, which was great. But he's, they, you know, when they announced him, like, he's the number two Republican in the Senate. He's the senior most. Da -da -da -da. And to my mind, he didn't stand for South Dakota. And either did the House representative stand for South Dakota. Which is sad. Because South Dakota is an America first state, largely. This brand of conservatives is America first. They worry about what their kids are learning in schools, what's being put on their plates socially, what they're seeing in the, the social media. But the progressives, the real, honest, want-to-be-American progressives, we don't agree, I and them, they, we don't agree on anything. But it is good to see them acknowledge that the progressive wing in politics and power has failed them because they opted to hold power rather than to exercise it. They had a chance to put through progressive change and failed. I, for one, I'm grateful that those people are cowards that they're short-sighted fools. I want that out of a progressive. I do. Everything progressives stand for is are wrong. It just is. I can't think of one redeeming policy that the progressive push. So don't get me wrong. I'm glad they're failures and weak. I'm glad that they're cowards. And short-sighted. And largely simple-minded. But the progressives are acknowledging that the people that represent progressive ideologies 
and politics and policy don't actually stand for them. They see with this Hakeem Jeffries vote, they couldn't even get dissent on a better minority leader in the in the in the, in the rep in the house. I love the fact that the liberal Democrats, the social Democrats, the just straight socialists, the anarchists, all of these, the progressives, all of these in the left hand wing, left left wing, lined up single file and said, "We're united. Hakeem Jeffries is our guy." Hakeem Jeffries would do everything he could to submarine the AOCs of the world because Hakeem is a corporate guy. He's a corporate socialist. <laughs> and he would submarine any progressive challenger in a heartbeat. And he will. We'll see this when he's controlling the House purse strings on purse strings on campaign contributions from the House to these representatives, you're not going to see a lot of primarying of current sitting Democrats because they want people that toe the line, that say yes, sir, that don't challenge. They don't want people to look them in the eye they want people to look down and submit because that's the power structure in Washington. And that's what these conservatives stood against. And the honest, the honest progressives out there that don't hate America, maybe they don't like it, but they don't hate it. The Jimmy Doors, they don't like what the Republicans did, but they admire it. And that's something we need to recognize, that this group stood for something at cost. If they, first one to blink lost. That was, that's as simple as these days were. The second insurrection, so-called, which I love, kicked off on January 6th. I love that. <coughs> This shows you what politics should be about. This should be about principles above power. Integrity. It should be about fighting for what you love and what you believe in. Yeah, you compromise here and there. You have to. Everybody makes... Hey, ask anyone who's married. You got to compromise. You have to have a meeting in the middle. But I love that on this one day, this one vote, this 15th vote, the possibility for something in this country to become a little bit more conservative happened. Look at the history. Look at the political history and the cultural. We are moving. We have been moving away from traditional founding values since the beginning of this nation. The, the, the move leftward was so gradual, so... But Jefferson did things. Adams did things. Adams, I don't. The the uh, was it tolerance? Was, uh, he did things that he railed against, but then faced with reality, became a sudden pragmatic and went against principle. Enacted laws and policies that the people found unpopular, and they got Jefferson put into office as a result. Jefferson, I think, was a true revolutionary. Not a radical, but a revolutionary. I think he, 
He liked the idea of what the United States could do every four years through every election. But look at how breakneck this push to the left has been. And now with these rules changes, which we'll get into in the next video, but we have a chance at conservatism again. We have a chance at returning to some form of honest government for the people, by the people, and not the elite crony establishment running breakneck. So progressives, I'm sorry you failed. Sorry, not sorry. But this is what an example of courage looks like. This is what an example of standing up for principle looks like. It's not the photo op at the fence. It's not innocuous tweets showing your moral superiority as fake as it is. Anyway, that's all for this one. Part two is coming up. We're going to talk a little bit about what some of the concessions were. Uh, I hope you join and follow. I hope you will like. I hope you tell your friends. And I hope you like the new slate of videos I'm going to have coming out. I ordered a camera and a microphone, and I'm trying to figure out this studio system so I can do response videos to the God Loves Mormons or whoever, whatever picks up on radar, whatever you want to hear about. So... Give this a like if you liked it. Tell people about it. Let's build a great community of uh, outstanding saints who are aware of what's going on in the world and in our communities. Shall we? Until then, peace and thank you.